Okay. Guys, I see that you're creating some uh, quite cool games. The Discord has been filling up with uh, quite a few uh, racing projects, low poly racers, much further away than I've managed to get on my one. Gee, I got uh, <laughs> quite some cool, uh, cool games. Uh, one guy uh, made a like a Mars racing game that was uh, super cool. Another guy made a really uh, intricate track with uh, loads of AI and cars and stuff that looked amazing too. And I've seen uh, quite a few projects, so thrilled about that. And sorry, internet, for filling up everything with low poly stuff and uh, <laughs> top down racers at the moment. All right, it's 1:41 uh, a.m. I've got myself a cup of coffee and I've booted up the low poly racer project again. So let's get cracking at that one. So my real project is a little bit ahead and uh, you can actually play the game. If you look in the description and uh, you can actually play my version of the game, it's got a little bit further ahead with some sounds and things like that and skid marks and things. Go to that URL and play it. And I'm gonna have a little uh, competition. So whoever scores the fastest lap before 1st of June will win $50 on Steam, Steam vouchers. So how about that? And you have to record it so I can see that it's happening. So you have to record it, maybe using OBS is, that's what I use to record this stuff. So uh, it's called Open Broadcast Software. If you Google that, you can download it and do a screen capture. Post it on uh, on YouTube and whoever's got the fastest lap, uh, and you have to let me know about it as well. Hashtag it uh, low poly racing. So uh, maybe I can find it that way. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll check out whoever before the 1st of June, uh, midnight uh, CET. Um, will win $50 in Steam vouchers. How about that? <laughs> that should be fun. All right, guys, this is where we left off pretty much anyway. Uh, the, I've got, I just continued to place all the tra uh, trackside objects. So I added the more stones, more tires, and more fences all the way around the track, but it's pretty much exactly how I did it in episode four. So have a look at that if you want to see how to place those uh, trees and, and trackside objects. Uh, and then uh, I swapped the, the cop car out for this uh, race car. I also modeled this one during this uh, 10 minute video, if you remember that. So uh, I've swapped that out. I thought it was a little bit more racy to keep that one in the game. So, but it's pretty much the exact same setup as before. And uh, it's here, uh, it's just uh, got the same hierarchy for the wheels and everything like that that we did last time. And if I press play now, uh, there's uh, no, mm, yeah, pretty much where we left off anyway. So so the first thing I wanna do now is uh, I wanna create a prefab out of this one. So I'm gonna just, uh, I've created a folder here called prefabs and uh, an another subfolder here called cars. So I'm gonna drag this racy car now and I'm gonna drag it into the cars subfolder. And just by doing that, it'll create this little blue icon here and that makes uh, this one blue as well. It's created a prefab out of it, a, um, a pre prefabricated object that you can reuse over and over again. I think uh, next thing we're gonna do now as well, I wanna branch out a little bit with the scripts for the game manager. And I wanna create, well, I have to keep track of lap times and things like that. So I'm gonna create a player object. So in this uh, folder, in the scripts folder, right click and do create C sharp script and let's call this one player and then double click to go into edit this one. And now we're gonna start adding some content here, stuff that we wanna have the control over. So uh, the car is uh, the car itself. I wanna try to isolate the logic as much as possible. Uh, so when I create the scripts and components, for example, the car should really focus only on what the car is doing. So like uh, keeping track of the wheels and applying torque to the wheels and doing skid marks and things like that. So I wanna branch out now a little bit and, and, and make a, a player pre, uh, sorry, a player script that does some stuff. So the first thing I want to make uh, possible is uh, I'm going to create a public enum here called control type. And that's going to be able to have two different values. One of them is human input and the other one is AI. Because a player could either be me playing the game using my keyboard or a, a controller, or it could be an AI player. Still, both of them are players, just one's human and one's AI. And uh, I just want to set up so I can uh, um, prepare for that in the future when we added some AI stuff. And then we want to do a public uh, control type here of that enum type and we will name it control type and set that to, to default to human input and that's what we'll be using then we want to keep track of a few things we're going to start adding some lap times and things like that so let's do uh, some public floats here as well and uh, floats is basically i'm just going to keep track of the number of seconds that a lap takes and then we can reformat that into a time format let's make a property here called best lap time 
and it's going to be a property and we're going to be it's a public get so we can get it from anywhere any script will be able to read this one but only this one will set it so we're going to say private here set and then we're going to default it to mathf.infinity because uh, we don't really have a best lap yet and if we set it to zero and we try to compare a lap time to zero you're never going to beat zero are you <laughs> so uh, let's just set it to infinity everyone will beat infinity so the second float we'll do as well is public float and then let's do last lap time because we want to keep track of the most uh, or the previous lap that you just completed uh, that one we can set to zero because it's not being completed yet so let's just put that and then we're going to make another one and uh, let's do a current lap time so current lap time this is also going to be a get from anywhere but a private set and default that one to zero as well and then we have a lap counter as well so we'll do a public int integer this time whole numbers and uh, it's going to be current lap get private set and equal zero that's it and uh, then we have to keep track of uh, some of the timers as well so uh, those are just to keep track of uh, of the actual lap uh, times themselves and the current lap count but we have to use a timer to, to time ourselves as well so what we'll do here is we'll do a private float lap timer and we also need to kept, uh, create some checkpoints to pass and we have to keep track of those so let's do a private int so let's just count those last checkpoint passed and let's just set that one to zero so i have the scene here uh, let's just uh, start by in all the corners we'll cr create a, a trigger collider so and we'll start i think by the start finishing line here so if i go here and let's create uh, a new folder here under track and let's just create a new empty game object and call it uh, checkpoints Oop. checkpoints and uh, we keep that at zero 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 here and then we add our first checkpoint so i'm gonna click add here and create another empty and then just call this one one short short and sweet and no need to complicate it and then we add a component here and it's just going to be a box collider and it's going to be a trigger so we take this little trigger mark here and then we can change the size let's see if we can find it in the scene here now we'll just move the whole game object here so we can get this into place so i'll zoom out a little bit on the mouse wheel here slide it into here and now let's just create a, a quite a generous collider here so we'll make it wider like this let's make it possible to pass a little bit on the grass here as well and then maybe we change the height as well in case you're or no the depth to cover yep the track and then height as well maybe someone's flying through here colliding on something so let's be generous on the height as well on the height as well so this is going to be our uh, start finishing uh, checkpoint one collider and then what i can do is just uh, I select this one and press ctrl d to duplicate it rename this one to two and then let's just put uh, colliders here on each corner so i'm going to slide it here so iso top view that's it and now we select uh, two here now we know that uh, they're perfectly aligned with the isometric view and we've got a perfect top view by clicking on this little green axis here the y-axis then we know that this is looking straight down it'll be a little easier to align these now we can press uh, press <laughs> press uh, select this one again press uh, E to rotate not like blender so where it's R here it's E so uh, let's rotate it into shape and press uh, R to scale very strange um, let's just make a checkpoint here again a little bit generous on the grass so you don't have to do it perfect maybe you can cut the corner slightly there let's press ctrl D duplicate uh, I'll rename all of them later on so let's just put keep putting these now and rotating them and putting them into the corners here Control d again rotate it's a bit tricky for the player to know now if they've passed the checkpoint or not they'll just be disappointed if they come through a lap and it doesn't count but they shouldn't have skipped the corner then should they so it should be all right uh, but you could uh, consider maybe putting some little things that light up like little uh, lights that shows that you've cleared the checkpoints that's one way to do it maybe so I'm just doing Control D, rotating these into place for all the corners. Ah, come on, all the corners here. And there's no back or front on these; they they just have to be there so you can pass through them. Uh, Control D. Oh, this is going to be this, just two more now to rotate this one. 
bring it down to there and control D like now the same shape and now we'll just, just do a, a whole bunch of F2 on these to rename them five six seven eight five six seven eight nine ten and eleven also what I'll do is I'll, I'll create a new layer for this uh, now we can go back into perspective here and if I block select this with shift, I'll, I'll see all the colliders here that I've got. That's looking pretty good. So I'll go here on the layer, add a layer. Let's just call it checkpoint. And then I go again, block select all of these. Actually, let's do the whole thing here. Checkpoint and then yes to change all the children. So, okay. So now we've got a whole bunch of checkpoints here. Now we need to make sure that the car is passing through these. And we were working on a script for that. So. Uh, We've got this uh, player script now, it's not attached to anything, it's not actually doing anything yet, so let's uh, work a little bit more on this script. So first thing in the awake, we're going to use the awake instead. I usually use awake to get things, uh, if you don't know what awake does, it's uh, a mono behavior that executes automatically and so does start, but all the awake, uh, so if I do this, void awake. Uh, any script now in Unity that has this awake method will be called uh, as soon as the script is uh, awoken or <laughs> started up. And then it'll complete this awake on all of the different scripts that you have, all the money behaviors. And when it's done with that, it'll actually do the start method on all the scripts. And then it'll complete that and then it starts going into its update loop. So you can you have a little bit of control if you want to put it in awake or start. So sometimes you can have a race condition. So you want to. Uh, if you have something that must be set in start, you can set it in a week. That was a lot of a lot of uh, chatting there for very little information. But uh, in a week anyway. So when this uh, game object is started, we want to do checkpoint uh, parent. We need to find this parent object. Uh, checkpoints. It's plural. Parents. And let's just do a, a quick and dirty find for this one. Game object find checkpoints. Dot transform. We want to transform for this one, and we actually have to define that one here. So we need a private transform checkpoint points parent. Okay, and uh, so game object dot find will Unity will look in the entire scene now for a game object that's named checkpoints, and it goes by this string here. This will look through the entire scene, and this is quite a, an expensive operation for Unity to do to look through the whole hierarchy. You don't want to do this in every frame of your game, but I'd say it's perfectly fine to do it in awake. So sometimes it's difficult to uh, if you rename the object in your scene, for example, this won't be found and it'll throw an error. And I'd also say that it's pretty good that the game throws an error, so don't do a check here to say if uh, null, then uh, just be silent. Uh, it's good that it fails if you change the name, because then you know, oh, yeah, I remember now. <laughs> I had to change the name. The reason why I'm not doing it uh, into a public one here and assigning it in the inspector is because if I have loads of tracks, uh, let's say I've created 10 tracks, I don't really want to be uh, creating a, a hard reference here in the inspector for each uh, track, because uh, this should be quite generic, the script, so it should just uh, expect that there is a checkpoints uh, parent somewhere in the scene and use that one. That's why I'm not using uh, uh, public to expose it in the inspector. So now that we've got that, let's do a checkpoint count as well. So checkpoint uh, count equals uh, checkpoints parent dot child count. Every transform in Unity, you can access this little property here or a, a variable called child count. And this one we haven't defined yet. And here's a nifty trick in a C, uh, Visual Studio that you can do. I just typed a name that I wanted here. You can press Control period on your key. And then it, the first suggestion here is to generate a field. And if I just press enter now, you don't have to type this manually every time. So that's quite a nice trick to save yourself some time. So now uh, we've got a track of how many, and we created 11 checkpoints. So that's what's going to be, uh, it's going to detect now. If we look in Unity here now, we can see that the checkpoint has got, this is a transform if you remember, and it's got uh, 11 transform under it, the children, and that's what it finds here. So that's going to turn into 11. Then we'll do a checkpoint uh, layer. Let's see, checkpoint layer equals layer mask. And here, this oh yeah, layer mask um, name to layer. And we're going to convert the checkpoint uh, layer here. And then again, we want to define this one, control period, and it'll know that it should generate. Uh, and this is an integer. 
And the reason why I'm doing this is because it's faster for Unity to run on integers instead of having to do a, a, a name uh, check all the time. So that's why I'm defining it in a wake. It only needs to convert layer mask dot name to layer will take this uh, string name and convert it to an uh, int. It could be some w really weird number that only Unity knows about, but it stores it in this layer, so we can use that one. And finally, uh, let's we need to get get a hold of the car as well. So let's do um, car controller. So this is for the player and uh, equals get component and we'll get the car controller component here. And we have to generate this one as well. So stand here, control period and enter. And that's to find those uh, for us because we need to keep track of a few things for the car as well. The reason why we want to keep track of the car as well here is because we're going to send the input here. We're feeding uh, the input controller, but we're going to change this now. So uh, either an AI or a human can control this car. I'm going to change this around now and have the player script take care of this instead. So let's actually just copy this now. Control C or Control X actually to cut it out. And then let's go to the player ops script here. We can delete this uh, little command here. And now we'll do if control type equals equals equals. Remember, it's two equal signs here. Dot human input. So if it's human input. So uh, now we need to change because uh, these are actually properties that exist on the car controller. And we've defined the car controller here. So we can copy this, control C, control V, control V. So now we've just moved this logic from the car script, from the car controller into the player controller. So now if we're human, most of us are, not everyone, I doubt myself sometimes. If you're human, it'll take your input and it'll throw it to the cars, uh, so same as we did before. Now, actually, if we put the script on the car itself now, we, we can still have the car. Um, we can, even though it's called player, we can still have the script here. So we've got the car controller. Now let's just drag the player here. If I press play now, it should find the car controller. Yeah, everything works again. Uh, we're still not actually doing anything about the checkpoints. So let's uh, fix that now. All the, the only thing we did now is we've separated some of the logic into this player script and we're human here. If I switch this to AI now, I haven't implemented any AI, so nothing will happen. Why is that working? I haven't saved this one yet, so I have to save it. Let's double check this now. This shouldn't work now. So the, the car controller doesn't have any, uh, any input, so I hit W like a crazy person, nothing happens. Let's switch it back to human input, press forward, and then here we go. Now it's the player script that listens for the keyboard input if we're human, and it sends it to the car controller. So that's good. Now let's start doing some lap times counting here. So we can do, um, let's go back into this script, the player, and let's start checking the lap time a little bit. So let's do current lap time equals lap timer. Have we defined the lap timer? Yeah, there we go. And if, if that's greater than zero, that means that we've actually started the lap timer. Um, then we're going to have it set to time dot time minus lap timer, or otherwise it's going to be zero. So this is just a, a shorthand if statement here to not break it out over loads of lines. But current lap time will, if lap timer is greater than zero, then the current lap time will be time current time in Unity minus the lap timer, which is basically like a timestamp. Uh, otherwise, it'll stay zero. So if that makes no sense, we need to add a little bit more code for this to work. So let's create another one here called, uh, it's going to be a new method, void start lap. And here we do, we'll increment the, the current lap. So current lap plus plus means that it's just going to add it by one. That means that we've created a, or we've added a new lap. We've <laughs> completed a lap. We have to reset the last checkpoint passed to number one because this is going to be called when we pass the start finish line. So that means we've checked that we've passed checkpoint one here. And also let's set the lap timer here. So lap timer equals time dot time. And what we're doing here now is we're just putting when you press play on a game in Unity, then it starts from zero, this time dot time, and then for every second it'll just count up, but it's also a float number, so it'll have uh, quite good precision with uh, milliseconds and things like that. So what we're doing here, when we start a lap, we're basically setting a, a timestamp here. And what you, you could say that, uh, for example, if, uh, if you pass this when uh, the clock is at uh, uh, seven, let's see, seven dot 87, 
<laughs> why did I write 775 then? But let's say it's 775 here. It'll just take the current time and store that in lap timer. And the reason we do that is because here in update, when we, if the current lap time, we can actually calculate. So let's say now here, the time is, uh, we've driven past the first corner and coming up to the second, maybe that took us about uh, three seconds. So now the timer, this time, what am I pointing to the screen? So time.time .time here now is 10.75 say. And we do minus 775 because that's what this timestamp is. And we could actually rename this one and call it. If I press F2, I can rename it to lap timer timestamp. And that would be equal to three seconds. So the current lap time is uh, up to three then. So that was a little brief explanation of the logic. Hope it makes sense. And we also need to do an end lap here. So we'll do void end lap. So these are methods that we can call. And uh, then we're actually going to calculate now what the last lap time was. So let's do last lap time equals current time, which is time dot time minus lap timer, which is the timestamp. So now we've completed a whole lap. And let's say that took about 20 seconds. So again, if the, uh, if the lap timer was 7.75, oh, I renamed that one, didn't I? Uh, lap timer timestamp. So if that one was 7.75 and we are now at uh, 37.75, so that minus that one meant that we did a lap of 20 seconds. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, hope so. Math was never my strong side. So uh, also we can do a best lap time check here. So best lap time equals mathf.min, which is kind of pick the lowest value now of either last lap time or best lap time. And the first time we complete a lap here, let's say it took you one minute because uh, you don't understand how to drive a car. And this will check, is one minute lower than math F infinity? And it's gonna say yes, and then it's gonna store in best lap time, it's gonna store that one minute lap. But next time you come around, maybe you did it in 40 seconds because you improved a little bit, then uh, it'll see, okay, 40 seconds is lower than the current or the last best lap time that I have of one minute, so I'll store that one. It'll keep doing that all the time and update this best lap. But then again, if you did a slower lap, then it won't update it because it'll take the smallest value of either the current lap time that you, or the last lap time that you did or the best lap time. Still nothing would really happen. We just prepared a lot of things, but now we need to start checking for the collisions here. So on the player script here, let's do void on trigger enter. And then that can, uh, this is a, a money behavior as well that uh, Unity will execute when it hits a collider or a trigger in this case. And we can actually get some information about the collider. So you can do this. When we drive our lap now, you enter one of these triggers. This will be called automatically on the script since we've uh, triggered it. And now we need to do some logic in here. If, let's say if the collider game object layer is not a checkpoint layer, oh, checkpoint layer, then we don't wanna do anything. So we just return back. We want to ignore that. Let's say you had another trigger here for uh, a red light or something like that. I don't know, any trigger. Then uh, we want to check here that it's actually a checkpoint layer. And if it's not the checkpoint layer, the collider that we just uh, entered the trigger of, we want to just return out of this. We want to ignore everything else. So we know now if we hit this line down here, that means that we have in fact uh, entered a trigger of a checkpoint that is. So if collider game object, then we can check if that trigger name is one because that's what we named this object to. If you remember, we just named it short and sweet one here. So it'll check is, if this name is one, that means that we're actually passing this checkpoint here. And then we can do uh, some logic here. So let's uh, enter some squiggly marks here. And then we'll do, uh, so if last checkpoint passed equals checkpoint count. If the last checkpoint that, that we passed was the same as the checkpoint count, which is number 11, that means we've just completed the lap because we hit the last uh, checkpoint. I'm gonna comment this to make a bit more sense. So if this is checkpoint one, which is, we're doing the check here, then we're gonna see, and we've completed a lap and the current lap. So that means that if the last checkpoint that we passed equaled checkpoint count. So if the last one we checked was this one and you're now hitting this one, that means we've just completed a lap. So we can do end lap here. And then we can do if, uh, actually let's put some comments here again. So let's do if we are on our first lap, 
before we've passed the last checkpoint, start a new lap. So then we'll do if current lap equals zero, or if last checkpoint passed was checkpoint count. That means that we need to start a lap here. If we are just about to start our first lap here, then uh, if current lap is zero, we haven't done a lap, then it doesn't matter. As long as you hit the start finish line, we're gonna start a new lap. What if you, you drove and tried to cheat? So let's say you drove the car here, past checkpoint one, past checkpoint two, past checkpoint three, past checkpoint four. Here, past checkpoint five, you thought, huh, I know a shortcut. So I'm just gonna cut across the grass here and try to complete the lap. Th that won't work because with this check here now, we need to see that it's either, uh, so you're on your first lap, so uh, then this won't be true. Then it's gonna see, okay, last checkpoint passed. It was number five, it wasn't number 11 that, that it needs to be. So we're not gonna start a new lap. We know you cheated. Also, we, we know that you didn't finish this lap because it needs to be 11 there. That's it, we can just uh, return, we're done there in the script but there's also if it wasn't number one here that you hit we want to do some more checks as well so let's put some logic here so if we've passed the next checkpoint in the sequence because we have to do them in order as well we don't want to be able to do like uh, checkpoint one and then skip across to number five and then find a, an optimal route uh, like that so let's do uh, update the latest checkpoint and we do that through uh, if collider game object name equals last checkpoint passed plus one. And this is an integer, so we have to convert this to a string, this method here. Then we can do last checkpoint passed plus plus. And this means that uh, this, the, the name of the checkpoint that you're passing needs to be one named one number higher than the one that you passed previously and only then should you increase the last checkpoint pass so you can't just another one uh, that would have been ugly to do if you didn't do this check basically you could just drive across the finish line go back hit pretty much no this just this checkpoint again number 11 and then do another lap but learn a lap that's what we need to keep track of the sequence we're pretty much done with this script now but nothing will really happen because we're not uh, updating a ui or anything so maybe we'll just uh, debug log some input here and uh, say uh, here we, let's in this method let's do debug log start lap here we can do end lap let's do a debug log here uh, end lap and then we can say lap time was and then last lap time seconds now we can try this so let's press play and we won't really know since we're not out outputting it now we see yeah start lap that one triggered and i looked down there so i crashed instead let's uh, drive around a lap here let's clear this jump and let's see, there, end lap. 23 seconds and 58 uh, parts of a second, <laughs> hundreds. We might as well move straight onto the UI now so we can actually output this onto the screen. For that, we'll uh, create a canvas. So let's uh, minimize this a little bit. Right click here and go create uh, UI canvas. And we can create uh, right click UI panel. And we don't really want it to be white so we can uh, take away this uh, just uh, image, let's just get rid of it, remove. And let's call this one uh, panel, or we can call it uh, race panel. And now we need to throw some text at the top. So let's just do right click here, UI text, and let's uh, make it yellow or orange. Let's type here lap and then put some placeholder stuff here. And we don't want the lap, oop, we're looking from the wrong way here. We don't want the lap to be in the center of the screen like that. So uh, first of all, let's make it a little bit bigger and bolder. And then we wanna put, uh, actually you can put some shadow on as well. It's a bit difficult to see. So let's add a um, component here. Just type in shadow and you can get a little shadow here. Maybe two minus two to get the offset a little bit more. Let's call this one text current lap. And then we need to position this. And this could be a bit tricky to before you get used to it but it's all about this rect transform up here. And we're currently, it's got a center point here 
and uh, so wherever this uh, position is and it's got this pivot point of 0 0.5 0 0.5 which is in the middle of the object because it goes from 0 is on the left of the object and 0 is on the y is at the bottom of the object and then uh, it goes up to 1. So what we want to do if we want to align it up in this corner here first of all we want to change this anchor here so it's anchored up in the top left corner here and then we want to do the pivot point we don't want that to be in the center of the text so let's do that one to zero which is at the left of the text here and it's left aligned the text here as well and then we want to do pivot point is going to be uh, <laughs> one on the y-axis because y one is at the top over here this one and now we can change this uh, so if we put zero here it'll slide it all the way to the left edge here and then zero on the y it'll slide it all the way up so a recap here we put the anchoring point here to top left and then we've put the pivot point to the top left of this text object here and then we've reset the position to zero zero and that that will nicely anchor this one now so no, regardless of how you resize this it'll put that up in the corner but then again we want to have some margin maybe so let's put it 10 pixels in and maybe minus 10 down or something like that and let's make it uh, should we make it a little bit bigger no that should be all right uh, but what we'll do is we'll actually scale this canvas as well because if you resize this the text will be really small all the time so let's scale it uh, to be uh, to scale it with screen size now we'll uh, always have the same it'll make the text bigger if you have a bigger screen so maybe that's uh, quite suitable for this game so that's going to be our lap timer we, we or sorry the lap count we want to have a lap timer as well so let's do another one here called uh, current time and then uh, we can we I just press ctrl d to copy that one now we can slide the x position in a little bit maybe to there let's type a nice even number there 110 and then this was going to be lap or just put time and it's quite racy to have it in uh, italic isn't it so let's do italic text for all of these it's a bit uh, sporty race car bold italic okay and here we're gonna have just it's gonna say like some time here we'll just type in a placeholder so we know roughly how big it is now and then uh, we need to do two more uh, we want to keep track of the last lap time and also the best lap time so just press ctrl d to duplicate these the best one let's just keep sliding these in actually uh, you could re-anchor it to be right aligned or something like that but let's just do this last and also here best we'll put best and then slide this one into maybe a bit and i always like to keep these <laughs> i don't like uh not i'm a bit ocd so i need to have it on some decent numbers there I need to round it off if i press play now this is not going to update because all i've done is create some placeholders here so uh, it'll be fun if this actually kept track of what we're doing and for that to happen, we need to create a new uh, little manager here. Uh, so let's create uh, a new object here under the game manager. Create empty. Let's call it UI controller. Let's create a new script here. Right click and do C sharp script UI controller. Let's drag this script onto the UI controller game object. And then we need to Put some content in here as well here we want to keep track of a few things so the first thing we want to do is uh, expose some stuff to the inspector so public game object and it's going to be the ui race panel here that we want then we're going to keep track of these different text objects that we created so let's do public text ui text current lap was the first one and this one is uh, squiggly red here because we need to do control period on it to uh, use uh, using unity engine.ui then it knows what that it's a text object here that we want let's uh, control c this one and do current time and here we want to change to last lap time and then best lap time and if i go back here now it should expose these into the inspector here and now we can just drag these here so we'll drag the race panel to here because uh, if we're in a menu we want to hide the race panel that's why we need a reference to that the current lap here there we go time last lap and best lap so now we've created references it's still not going to update because we've only created a, a possibility to use these so and uh, we actually have to say okay which player should we be updating as well so let's do a public player and then update UI for player and let's set uh, 
let's make this a property that we can get and set from outside. Actually, that's uh, instead of making a property now, let's expose that in the inspector because we, we can script that later on. But for now, let's just uh, do a reference to that in the inspector here. So if that should pop up now here, and then we just drag this. The player script is on this racy card here, so that's it. And let's go back into the script again. And in the update folder, uh, <laughs> update folder, in the update here now, let's just check if uh, there is actually an update uh, player set. And if it isn't, then we just uh, return out of this one. Return, there we go. Then we actually need to keep track of, uh, we don't want to be updating the UI all the time, only when something is changed. So let's do a private integer here called current lap. And then a private, let's just do all of these private for uh, the current current time. We'll do a last lap time. And one more here called best lap time. And let's only change these if they've actually changed. So let's do a check here. If current, I'm sorry, if update UI for player dot current lap isn't the same as the current lap that we've actually got stored or in our private variable, then we need to do something. We need to do, uh, let's update the UI. So current lap needs to be set to the update UI for player current. So we'll get the current lap from this player and store that in our private variable. And now we need to update the UI as well. So UI text uh, current lap dot text equals, we can do a do a dollar sign before a string here, then you can do some inline string uh, replacement here. So let's do lap colon current lap with these squiggly marks, then uh, that'll replace, uh, allow you to insert that into the string. So this should work now. If we go to press play, bing, lap one. And then the reason why it starts on XXX because we haven't uh, stored anything, but we could uh, force it to change that because we're on basically we're on lap zero. So if we current lap equals minus one here, just to set set it to something, so it detects that it's different here. Now when we press play, it'll update that straight away to number zero. And then we do a lap here, and there we go, lap one. Okay, let's fix the times as well now. So uh, we do uh, another one here. If uh, let's copy this because we're going to be typing it sometime here. Copy. So if the current lap time isn't the same as the, what we've stored here lo locally, then we'll do uh, current lap time. Uh, sorry, current time equals current. Oh, we call that one lap time. So let's actually do that here as well. Lap time. F2 to rename that one. And then we'll do here UI text current time dot text equals and then time. Are you, okay, so here for time we'll do uh, first we need to get the minutes of the we don't want it to, to be um, we want to break out the minutes first of all here. So let's do the squigglies here to replace uh, the text in here. We'll cast it to an integer and we'll do the current lap time divide that one by 60 to divide it by 60 seconds, but we'll just keep the whole whole number from this, the integer. We'll put a colon here and then we'll do uh, another, uh, now we're gonna get the seconds and the thousands of a second here. So we'll do uh, current lap time and then we'll do modulus 60. So we get rid of the, the minutes first and then we do colon, the format for this, this is how you do the string format is gonna be seconds, two seconds here. So it'll start like zero one, zero two, zero three and then it'll keep uh, 300, uh, the thousands of a second here as well. Now we press play, when we pass this, it'll start counting the lap time in here. Okay, we need to just do the same now for the last and the best update here. So let's uh, copy, just mark these, copy them. And then here we'll change it to... Uh, Uh, oh yeah, we need to change this as well. So uh, this can't be the current time. So it needs to be, uh, this is the UI text element for last time, last lap time. And best lap time. 
and then we change here to last and here to best. And let's play. Okay, we got an issue here with uh, best is uh, not a number, none. <laughs> so we need to get rid of none. Uh, we have to implement a little overflow exception for that one. So what we can do here is um, let's only update this one if uh, we've actually set a, a, a decent lap time. So best lap time, if it's decent, I don't know. But let's say it's less than a million at least, so it's not infinite. You've done a terrible lap if you're on, uh, on that. Uh, this is the shortcut for a uh, if statement. So if best lap time is less than, a, let's see, a million, then uh, after this question mark, it'll uh, put this text here. And then we'll do a colon here, and then otherwise none, let's just put, because you haven't raced yet. So now we'll try again and play. So here we go, let's uh, try, try to see if this works now as well. So we've got our timer running, we're on lap number one. Steer here a bit. And let's clear the jump. And now we should get last lap time here and we should go up. So lap is now two, timer reset, and we've got a last lap time of uh, 21. 520 that's good so that one worked now we're gonna see if best lap is shouldn't update now because this, <laughs> this lap is not so good so let's see let's actually complete it though and then we can see that it didn't uh, update the best lap time but last should still update there we go so last lap time and now we're uh, Okay, so one more thing we can do, we can make this persistent as well, it's not so funny.